what are some key considerations from a preseason point of view loading in, in the AFL for you? Um, the biggest one is what's, what, what's required of your athletes in season. That's the biggest one. So, you know, you've got to sort of scale back from what they're going to be required to do for the 26 week in season period. And that could be sessional loads. So that could be, you know, what, what does the match, what does a match look like? You know, what does the mm-hmm. game look like? We've got to prepare for that. It's also, you know, um, weekly loads. What does that look like in season? And we've got to prepare them for that or have consideration of that. And what will a four, four or five week block look like? You know, what, what happens when we go to a congested schedule and we got a five day break or two six day turnarounds or, you know, all of those things have got to be considered because that means that's a basis for how I load, what the frequency of the training sessions is and all that kind of stuff in season. I think a mistake that I, I made in my first year when I took over the head of performance role is I sort of, I wanted to scale back a little bit on the frequency of training and go to bigger volume of sessions um, and train three, say three times a week. How do you sort of um, factor that in into your preseason loading? Yeah, well, it's just about finding out for me what the worst case scenario is from a training load point of view. So I don't really use GPS for training load mm-hmm. um, anymore. I'm just I'm going a bit old school and just looking at time and RPE and, and that kind of thing, you know, sessional RPE and time and, and, and calculating that across training load. And, you know, it's easy to go week to week to go like round one, round two, round three, but that's not how load manifests itself in an athlete. It's daily because, you know, week to week could include two games or week to week could include one game or no games or whatever. So mm. sort of work on that rolling sort of seven and 21 and 28 day um, average of workload or, 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 and then have a look with your planning in season. What, what is the maximum that we're going to require to do? So is it, you know, two training sessions and two games in the space of, you know, seven days? That might be a peak. Okay, let's look at that peak. Um, then my goal in pre-season is whatever you think the peak might be in season, I'm hoping to get sort of 20 or 30% above that in pre-season. So 120, 130% of what that in-season might look like. Can you give us con- like a bit of clarity on, on why you think GPS isn't a good measure for training load? Um, so, I, yeah, I don't like it. I've come to the conclusion, like training load is impact on the body. That's the way I view training load. So what is the impact mm-hmm. on either the system or the um, or the body, you know, is it metabolic or mechanical impact? That's how I view load. And GPS inherently is like, you know, all the satellites in the sky and it's just how a player moves, like where, so it's not even how a player moves, it's where a player's moved and how quick. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a PhD study when I was at the Rabbitohs with a, a, a guy there, Dan Glassbrook's his name, and we got IMUs and put them on the lower extremities, put them on their training boots and looked at the actual you know, impact loads as good as we can get them without being in a lab um, with those IMU devices. And we compared that to the loads we we'll get from GPS and they just weren't, they just weren't anywhere near, um, you know, so GPS isn't telling us what load there is happening on the body. What would be some of your go-tos to when maybe they are going through that tough training block and you know, the, you know, the, the staff need to get around them and actually build that energy because the players are going through a pretty tough block. Uh, what would be yeah. some of your go-tos to, to, manifest energy and fun be willing be willing to change your plan to do that um but there's also it's a couple of easy wins you can play on a bit of psychology here with the players you really can like we can show them we show them a training session every single day like we outlay to them in the meeting pre-training this is what we're going to get through today these are the drills these are the running this is this is what the session looks like i'm happy to add if i if i'm in a, if i'm if we're in a state of Wanting the load, but wanting the players to feel like they're fresh, mm. we can manipulate that. We can add a couple of training drills to the bottom and then get to that point in time in the session and say, oh, boys, we're not going to do that training drills. Those training has been really good. Mm. You'll get a psychological benefit to that. Mm. Um, our players, like, we have three gym, three gym group rotations in the afternoon to keep our gym groups nice and tight. What about some common mistakes you've seen performance teams make or perhaps yourself that you've learned from that you factor in when you're planning your in-season um, performance work? Yeah, go, I'll go back to the biggest mistake, and I've made it, I've been in that, I've been as a weights coach and made this mistake, is to stop trying to improve. Mm-hmm. You know, get to the end of the pre-season and think, geez, all of our athletic development work's done here. They're strong, all, you know, we have been, our, our strength testing's gone up, our fitness has gone up. You know, let's, let's, that's, got, that's got us to the start line of the season. Let's just stop trying to improve and just maintain. I think that's the biggest mistake you can make because you can still make gains and inherently like when I'm running the preseason like I do where my preseason has more volume than my in-season period so 
the in season actually for a lot of the players that get through my pre seasons, they go well, in season's actually easier. Yeah. Because pre season was ridiculous. And yep. so now when the load comes off them, well, what happens then? We get a spike in performance. So, you know, it's things like speed and strength and acceleration and these physical components, they can actually get better. 